G'day friends, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna do a haul today. Now, we're gonna keep it very loose because <laughs> uh, my brain's gone on vacay. So today's haul. Now I never really do them. I never really haul anything. I think maybe I've done one before. Um, and that's because I don't typically go on shopping sprees, like quote unquote, I just, buy things as I need them or replace other things and I don't feel like that makes for an exciting video. But yesterday I went on a bit of a shopping spree for retail therapy. I um, I took a very personal day yesterday. I took a personal day today because I extended yesterday into today. <laughs> um, I just took two mental health days or as the rest of the world calls it, a weekend. And um, I just really needed it. I really needed to be with myself. I really needed to take care of myself, to get off my diet for a second, to not go to the gym for a couple of days and just like, just in general reset because I, I don't know just feeling a lot of emotions yesterday and uh, you know just you gotta take care of yourself don't you I've said this before it's super important and I am very lucky to have the luxury of being able to do that when I need to do it I know some people might have to wait until you know Saturday or Sunday to get their to get their reset button pushed but um, just please remember it's totally important and you are totally allowed to take time for yourself and to take time to make sure that you're okay. Now don't do it any don't do anything self-destructive. <laughs> um, I'm I'm only breaking the diet from yesterday and today. I will be back on the diet and the gym tomorrow. Um, if you're looking to self-soothe in any way, please don't make it damaging to yourself or your mental health or to anyone else around you. Um, but I don't think eating a few chocolate brownies and a pizza was a huge problem. <laughs> um, anyway, so I don't know if I've said this, but if you don't love haul videos and you've accidentally found yourself here, um, I'm going to give you permission to go and find another video on YouTube to watch. I don't want you to have to suffer through this. I know there are a lot of people out there that actually hate watching haul videos, um, or you could hate watch it. I don't know. I'll raise my hand. There are some things I hate watch on YouTube. <laughs> You'll never know, but I do it. So if you want to hate watch it, uh, watch on. If you don't want to watch it, I'm not going to take personal offense to it. I totally get it to each their own. I know just some people just don't like haul videos. So, um, I'm not one of those people. I love to look at art supplies. I love to look at stationery. So let's get going. This is um, from Mido. Now, yesterday, um, as a part of my little take care of myself day, Steve and I went to uh, Mitsua Marketplace, which is kind of like a Japanese marketplace. There's like a food court there with all these Japanese food stalls and um, they've got a big Japanese supermarket there, which, which reminds me of the one that we used to go to all the time when we were on contracts there. And um, they've also, they used to have this big uh, Japanese bookstore, which had a big stationery section. And the Japanese bookstore is uh, Kinokuniya. And it was exactly the same one that I had in Sydney when I used to go visit the city after school or, or find a reason to be in Sydney on a weekend just because I loved, loved, loved that big Japanese bookstore. Now, um, it was exactly the same, just a bit of a smaller format. That unfortunately closed down in Mitsua, but they moved the stationery section to Maido. So very, very happy about that because uh, yes, I, when I go retail therapy, I'm probably buying stationery or art supplies. Um, it used to be shoes, but I don't really care for shoes that much anymore. I generally just wear thongs or flip-flops, as the Americans like to call it. I feel like that's very Australian, just to put your thongs on and go, even in the winter. All my Aussies, <laughs> are you wearing thongs in the winter? This is from Mido, and I'm very, very excited. Now, here's the thing. I do this, I do this art thing as a full-time job. So these are tax write-offs for me. Um, these are business expenses. I need this stuff to be able to create the, uh, you know, the content, the artwork, the pieces that I scan and sell, um, stuff like that. So they are business expenses and it's a bit of a double-edged sword because I can justify spending money on it, but it, sometimes it loses its appeal because you know, I'm, it used to be fun to like, it was so naughty to buy a Copic marker because they were so expensive. <laughs> um, and then now it's kind of like, oh, well, I can justify buying it a lot easier because I know that I need them. Um, but yeah, I, I guess because I didn't pay as cheap as I could this time, I felt a little bit naughty and maybe it brought back some of that excitement. <laughs> and, uh, because look, $8 plus tax, I can get these cheaper. I, if you've heard before, I have been using Copic Chow markers for the better part of 10 years. And since some of them are drying out now, whatever dries out, I'm replacing with a Copic Sketch. 
Um, I know that I've heard you can refill the Copic Chow, but to be honest, I really like the ergonomics of the sketch marker better. So that's why I'm just changing and I will probably buy a refill once this runs out. Uh, Cause I find that these would be easier to refill and I would just rather refill these than the sketch, uh, the, ch the Chow, sorry. I just even feel like the, the nibs are worn out and I don't want to replace the nibs. It's just, I'm just doing this. I'm doing this, don't judge. Or judge and don't say anything. <laughs> so look, sometimes the luster of buying art supplies is a little worn off for me, um, but because I felt so naughty paying more than full price yesterday, I guess I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's still a business expense. It'll still go into my, um, it'll still go into my bookkeeping, which you know I love. Um, here are the Copic sketch markers that I picked up. Also, I wanna just say this. It's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because I want to I want to pay less money so I can have more, obviously. But sometimes I also want to buy things from the store. I want that tangible, um, you know, playing with the samples. I want to walk out of the store with a bag. I want the convenience of having it on the same day because I'm doing retail therapy. I'm excited. It's it's not really retail therapy to go out and scout your favorite colors and then come back and order them online and wait for it three days later. I'm going to be in a totally different headspace three days later, and I, I guess it just isn't the point. The point of yesterday is it, it goes hand in hand with the experience. It's like sometimes why do you pay extra? Why do you pay a premium for you know? I don't know buying a handbag or something Because you want the experience like the actual cost of materials Isn't that much the actual cost of the unit itself might be cheaper somewhere else But it's the experience of going into Louis Vuitton and actually picking out the purse and putting it over your shoulder and uh, not that I've done any of those things <laughs> <laughs> I did do it with the Mark by Mark Jacobs bag. I've shown that bag on a video before. I think it was that what's in my bag, the emergency video. Um, that's the bag that I had that very tangible experience that I ended up paying a lot of money for. Um, but I find it kind of the same thing with this. I was on a retail therapy journey yesterday. I really just needed to, um, to do whatever was going to make me happy. And I know that I had some money set aside for stuff like this. So uh, I just, I just went for it. So the colors, let's go with... RV04, shock pink. Uh, I haven't actually run out of this in the chow, so I probably shouldn't have bought it, but I just loved the colors together. See, I wouldn't have bought this if it didn't look so great with this set. Um, this is canary yellow Y02. We've got light tea rose. That's a really pretty color, I think, for shading uh, fair to medium skin tones. Light Prawn Art 22. Is that just not the most ridiculous name you've ever heard? I'm obsessed with it. I actually really like the color. <laughs> um, light Prawn or Light Shrimp as the Americans might say. And Robin's Egg Blue B02. Now, if you don't know this, fun fact, Tiffany Blue is most close to Robin's Egg Blue. So if you're just feeling the need to be basic like I was yesterday um, and get some Tiffany Blue in your life, the Copic Marker B02 Robin's Egg Blue is the one that is closest to Tiffany Blue. I watched a full documentary on it and they literally said Robin's Egg Blue is kind of the same thing. So um, I've got my facts straight, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, that documentary was actually really interesting. I don't know if it was on Netflix, but it's it's a Tiffany's documentary. My favorite part was when they were talking about the window display design and, and how all of that came to be in the egg shape that the designer was obsessed with. It's really fascinating. Um, I, if someone knows the name of that documentary, please put it down below, because I've forgotten. A Uniball Air, which was $3.95, it's actually $2.75 on jet pens, uh, but uh, did I even say why this was a double-edged sword? I, okay, I wanted to pay because I wanted the experience, but also um, your bricks and mortar stores, like your independent, your local retailers won't stay open if you're shopping online only. So I like to do a bit of a mix. I like to buy online and save some money. And then with the money that I've saved buying online, I like to reinvest in stores <laughs> that are local uh, because I don't want them all to close down and only be able to get my stuff on Amazon because once Amazon has the monopoly, which, you know, it almost has, then the price is just going to go up anyway. So uh, I just feel like if that is something that's important to you, just kind of, you know, sacrifice a little bit here and there and, and maybe keep your independent retailers open if that's important to you. I know markups can be crazy sometimes, but I just, you know, for me, $8, I could probably with a coupon get these for like $5 each. So I'm, you know, it's a, it's a bit more expensive. Like I said, this is, you know, $3.95 plus tax. I could get it for $2.75 on jet pens, but um, I, I am willing to 
to do that sometimes. And sometimes if I actually only wanted this pen, I'd be paying shipping on jet pens. So it kind of works out the same. <laughs> uh, but it, it, obviously it is cheaper to buy stuff online. And if that's all you want to do, then by all means go ahead and do that. But if that, if it's something that you maybe haven't thought about is keeping your bricks and mortar store, your local arts and crafts store open and available to you in those desperate times of need where you need something on the daily. Um, I don't know. Just maybe have a think about how you purchase. Um, but these, yes, was expensive. Uh, this is the Uniball Air. So like I said, you can find it on jet pens. Actually on jet pens, it says um, that the secret to this is the rollable tip is actually surrounded by plastic instead of metal. So it's there's less friction with the page and it means you can write it like virtually any angle. Um, the ink is also apparently the Super Ink, Uni Super Ink, which is uh, makes it resist like water resistant fade proof and um apparently it like will go over your documents and protect you from fraud maybe i don't know either way it's a 0 0.7 millimeters and um oh do you want me to swatch this stuff out i feel like i should swatch this stuff out i got this as well i've been eyeing this off for ages but i've never really had a reason to buy it because i thought well i could just put my own ink in a water brush and probably save a bit of money but i just caved and i got it yesterday Oh, there's all of this hair everywhere. This is the second video I've had to fish it out of. Um, and pigment ink as well, so archival, acid-free, um, fade-proof, etc. And I really just wanted to see if this brush was any different to a Pentel Aquash, because it's the same brand and it's the same concept, so I don't know. I've talked a lot about using uh, brush pens before. I have a Tag Tuesday, which is a brush pen tutorial as well. Tutorial? <laughs> uh, tutorial, because uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, getting a really interesting look to a lot of your illustrations can be achieved with just a simple brush pen. And I know they can be really intimidating to use, but once you've got the hang of it, they're actually really, really fun. If these are too intimidating for you, might I suggest a Zebra Sign Pen. These are labeled as a disposable brush pen. Um, it just means that you can't refill them or anything, but they're a very small, hard tipped brush pen. and. Uh, these are like by far my favorite little brush pen to use. I have a packet of 10 that I just, uh, uh, oh, I just threw it. <laughs> I have a packet of 10 that I just opened up and had on my desk um, and I've just been going through them all. Alternatively to the Uniball Air, if this is something that you're looking at and you're on jet pens, maybe try the Pilot Multi Ball as well. Um, this is an interesting one because it's uh, very, it's got this like gel grip, so it's it's kind of fun to, like, it's nice to use. Um, but the ink will actually write on stuff like plastic and once it's dry, it will become permanent. So there's a really good ink flow out of this as well. I believe it said it would write on glass. I haven't tried that, and to be honest, I'm not into it. I don't have a glass art journal yet, so <laughs> I'm gonna leave that. Um, but yeah, Uniball Air, I'm curious to see if that becomes a thing for me. I will get into swatching these out in a second because I wanted to show you this. This is so funny, you can't actually buy this. And I should have said this earlier, but if there's anything that I can find links to, I will leave them down below in the description box if you want to go and check them out. Um, I can't say at this point whether I like something or love something because I haven't really played with anything yet. But if I can find them, I'll put it down there in case you're having a, a day off too and you need to do some retail therapy and you can't make it to a store, whatever reason you need to tell yourself to purchase. <laughs> Just, I'll make it easy for you and I'll give you a link. Um, this is the, this is take free. So you can't purchase this, but it's actually an, like a Midori notebook, like it's a guidebook um, for the Midori 10th anniversary edition product. So they've actually got 10 A5 journals um, and they've all got different interiors. And I believe some of them are new just for uh, this anniversary release. Now I actually saw the kit and it didn't make sense to me until I came home. They were selling a big bundle of the 10 for $135 plus tax. Um, kind of wish I had bought it now, but that was just so ridiculous. What do I need? I have no business buying 10 art journals considering the amount of art journals I still have. <laughs> um, but and I've never even used this, this type, this format before. I've never even really played with this paper. I guess I have. My Traveler's Notebooks are um, MD paper, aren't they? Yeah, I'm just, I'm super curious about it because the layouts seem really fun and interesting. There is one that I think I am going to purchase because I haven't seen seen it before and, uh, and it just seems like a really interesting idea. And I do want one A5 uh, Midori's Notebook because they're just so pretty. Like, I don't know, they're, they're just really interesting to me. They're they're made to be very minimal to uh, let the work speak for itself. I was reading a whole bunch of these uh, these things the other day. 
and um, just with the cheesecloth, a little binding over the uh, over the stitching. It's just really pretty. So um, these are the, the samples that they've got in here, and basically, um, this is MD paper as well. They're just showing you what your book would look like if you purchased this one. So this is the dot grid. Um, they've got a sample for what you might want to do in that. Great for bullet journalers, I guess. They love a bit of dot grid. Sketch journal, which I think, uh, actually, no, I don't know if a lot of people have this one. I think they just have the plane, but the sketch journal has this, um, this bar up here with a title section. So you can kind of log what you're doing. Um, the lined with sections, I guess, great for your planning, your weekly plans, I guess. I don't know. I've, I've got my sketch planner, so I wouldn't need that. I guess if you just wanted to write poems in here, you could like little haiku. <laughs> You'd need a lot of haiku to fill one journal. You could use them for anything, like they could all just be art journals, but they're just really interesting formats. Like this storyboard one I find really fascinating. Um, I don't do comic books, but something like a draw, draw your day, like a December daily or some kind of 31 day challenge or something, or the 100 day challenge a lot of people are doing. I don't know, maybe if you only had to fill a space like this, I think you could get super creative and it'd be really, really fun. Um, I, I, this is the worst part. I have so many great ideas for these things, but I just, I, I wouldn't get the time to do a lot of it. <laughs> um, here we've got graph paper. I would never use this one, per, uh, to be honest, because the graph is so, so, so tiny. It's literally a one millimeter graph. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if it'll even pick up on camera. Hopefully you can see that. It's just way too small for me. But this would work for, I guess, what, whoever did this. What do these people do? Math? <laughs> this is for maths. <laughs> um, white grid. Now, this doesn't show up. I don't know if it's because the um, the actual one is, is black. Not black. Why did I say black? I literally said white. Um, the actual paper is cream, and then it shows up white. But they've shown you in gray what it looks like. It's actually just a five millimeter grid like a standard grid, but these are all printed uh, in white. So when you photocopy it, um, there won't be any of the lines there. So I thought that would be really great because a lot of what I like to photocopy or scan, I guess scan is different, it might still show up, but I'm sure it'd be easy to clean. Wouldn't matter anyway. Um, the white, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about showing up in your photocopies. And when I'm doing a lot of sketching, it's hard. I, because I draw a lot of the times like this, when I actually put my paper straight, a lot of the time I've drawn off center or one side is completely skewed. Even if I'm drawing like this, but my head is at a certain angle, like if my book is kind of up like this or it's down like that, if I'm drawing on the couch, I will draw at that perspective. And it's only until I look at it front on that I, I see how skewed and warped it is. So having a graph, um, a graph grid, is has been something that I used to sketch on when I was working out the proportions for the stamps that I made um, And I really really enjoyed that but I hated having to clean it all up because I could see all of the the black grid lines But if they were white I'm just assuming that they wouldn't really show up or just a, a tiny bit of color correction to get the cream to go to white would make it all disappear so I'm actually going to try and purchase this white grid version even though this isn't the exact one um, and I, I'll try and show it to you if it, if I do purchase it and it does come because I'm super curious for that. This is lined with a margin. So there's an empty space over the side to do your drawings in. V interesting. Um, this is graph with, uh, not graph, grid with a margin. And this is the oversized grid. So 600 boxes per spread. Uh, this is Japan for specifically designed for Japanese writing. Um, or it's a traditional format for manuscript writing in Japan, uh, which each box is for one character, which this is what I remember from when I was learning Japanese at school. We had these and we also had this vertical lined paper. So I uh, really, really feel nostalgic about these, but I just don't need it. <laughs> um, this can be my version of, uh, of, an, of a grid notebook when I get super old and my eyesight has been shot. Uh, when I need glasses, I'll be transferring to this size grid, but for now I'll try and buy the white. I don't really need these vertical lines, but it is interesting, I guess, if you have a desire to write this way, or if you are Japanese and you're watching this, konnichiwa, hajime mashite yoroshiku. You could buy this one too, but I'm sure you already know because you live in Japan or you know what Japan is like and how amazing you are with stationery. I love Japan. I couldn't love anything more than Japan, except for Steve, I guess, and the cats my family. 
love a lot of things <laughs> equally, but I just have a really, really strong love for Japan for all obvious reasons that I've talked about before. Um, anyway, so let me just swatch some things on here, shall I? This is the uh, Uniball Air. Here we've got light tea rose. Soy nice. This is Robin's Egg Blue or Tiffany Blue. Oh, they have like literally taped that side down. Um, this is Shock Pink. Oh, <laughs> I keep going for the one they've taped down. It's the brush end. They're very clever for doing that. See, the Japanese are so smart. Um, this is Canary Yellow. Because these aren't the testers, they're only going to let you use this side. Because they know that a lot of people don't like the chisel tip and you can't be ruining this one in the store. Thank you, Japan. Um, and this is Light Prawn. Here. Oh, I should say that there are Japanese people that run that store too. I'm not just thinking Japan and they didn't have anything to do with it. They absolutely did. <laughs> they run the store. It's really fun in there because sometimes I get the, uh, I get the courage to try and speak Japanese again. You know, it's been quite a while. It's been 84 years. <laughs> Clock the reference. Um, I'm trying to get this to work. I just can't figure it out. Was I supposed to take this red ring off? Read the instructions, James. See, that's flooding the res the reservoir. <laughs> the reservoir. <laughs> It'll be ready to use now. Oh, hey, brush pen. Oh, it's lush. I just love using a brush pen. I'm pretty shaky because I haven't drawn anything today. Fun fact as well, I don't know if you, yeah, you know this, but don't trust yourself when you first go into drawing. Your hand needs to kind of be warmed up just like your body does when you go to the gym, which I should know because I've been to the gym for like a total of two weeks. So obviously I'm a pro. Uh, but no, seriously, you, you don't trust that as soon as you start drawing that that's what you're capable of. A lot of the time you just need your hand to warm up and, uh, and then you're probably good to go. So this is, this is literally me drawing cold. I mean, this is kind of a difficult brush pen to maneuver, but I have faith that if I, if I'd been drawing for a couple of hours and then I pulled this out, I wouldn't be so shaky. So just something to think about. If you uh, get very discouraged very quickly in your drawing, why don't you just try some quick drawing exercises and then have another go at what you feel like you're being stumped on. And they don't even have to be anything crazy. I'm sure we've all got old art journals that we don't like anymore or that we just don't want to work in. Use those, grab them, do your circles, try and make perfect circles, do your uh, squiggles, do your straight lines. Literally just warming up your wrist and getting the feel uh, back in your wrist. And it, doing it with lots of shapes is really great because um, it acts as muscle memory. So when, if you, I mean, most illustrations are built with lots of shapes. So when you're doing it, uh, if you've been doing a whole page or like, a, you know, half a page of circles, when you go to do the circle on this face, your wrist is already m warmed up and you're getting used to the muscle memory of doing that with it. Because believe it or not, like your body will kind of start to remember the way that you like to do things and it will start to become second nature for you. So I know that there's a certain curve that I really like to do that my body is just kind of memorize now and um, I know exactly where I want to put the pressure because I've done it so many times and you'll see a lot of it when I'm drawing these bangs I'll start really thin up here I'll apply the pressure I'll taper it off down towards the ear and it's exactly the same kind of backwards s curve that I do all the time so um, trust in your body and uh, practice makes perfect and etc 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 blah <laughs> uh, anyway so this is great I am um, this is obviously not bleed proof, but I feel like you could tell that from how thin it was. I really, really can't wait. I want to get the um, white grid and see if that's good. This empty paper is specifically designed for writing, so it's just it's just beautiful. Um, anyway, let's get off all the things that we did at Mido. Let me talk about something else very, very quickly. This is the iPad 6th generation. I think it's uh, showing my ring light and my filming setup there. <laughs> Say hello to my iPhone 7. Um, if you guys don't know, I film on an iPhone 7 Plus because it has better um, ca recording capabilities than my actual DSLR. So if you don't know that, if you're looking for a camera, it may just be cheaper to buy yourself a, an unlocked iPhone. <laughs> it can do 4K. I didn't even shoot on 4K. I shoot HD 1080p. It looks great if you watch it in HD. Um, de it depends. You know, you have to have the lighting on as well because it doesn't shoot great in the dark, but nothing usually does unless you've got a super expensive camera. This is the um, iPad 6th generation. 
And this is the Apple Pencil, which is really interesting to me. I didn't know if I needed it because it was an extra hundred bucks. I think this was about 300. This was like a hundred and then I had Apple Care on top of that. So everything, oh, so I'm super distracted. There's a guy outside literally on a hoverboard, but it's just a wheel and two spokes out the side. Like it just looks like he's standing on a wheel and he's gone. I couldn't even take that to show you off quick enough. That is so random. You know, he's not the only person around here that has a hoverboard. There's these kids that live in these buildings that have these hoverboards that attach to a go-kart and they take their dogs around on this like hoverboard go-kart. It is so random to me. I didn't have that when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> How do these kids have this stuff? Like, what what are these kids gonna be like when they're older? Is anything gonna impress them? Like, I'd be impressed if my, my go-kart actually worked as a kid, but having to charge it and like attach it and build it to, like they're literally driving mini vehicles. Anyway, I'm off topic. Um, this is the iPad 6th generation, I said that. This is the Apple Pencil. Everything all said and done is about 500 bucks, but the, the alternative is a thousand. <laughs> um, because the iPad Pro used to be the only iPads that would work with the Apple Pencil, but they've actually made this regular iPad work with the Apple Pencil. So um, this is great because it's pressure sensitive and um, it's just ergonomically, it feels like a pencil. I've been using this. People have asked for a first impressions review. My first impressions is, yes, it's a little bit of an expense, but if you do a lot of work, um, say with collage sheets or digital um, reproductions of your work or your product manufacturing, this is going to save you tons and tons and tons of time. I literally designed two washi tapes the other day. It took me a total of 40 minutes on here and uh, I'm super excited to share those with you soon. <laughs> um, I had previously designed them on paper, but then when I realized that I could just get a better and more uniform effect for one of them on here and one of them I could clean up better on here, I, it's just been incredible. And because it's Apple, I, look, you, you're only one of two things, aren't you? You either love Apple or you hate what hap you hate Apple. Um, but because it's Apple, it syncs with everything else. So I can be working on this and literally open it up at my desktop and then I can open it up on my laptop. I can open it up on my phone. They all talk to each other. I bought some cloud space for 99 cents a month. So I don't even have to worry about saving things to here. I can just put it in the cloud and pull it out of the cloud when I need it. It's just incredible. So. My first impressions are, if you're in a creative field and you think this is for you, maybe uh, a lot of places will let you return it without a shelf fee. The Best Buy was gonna let me return it without a shelf fee for two weeks. So uh, maybe buy it, get $10 uh, for Procreate app, which I was recommended by tons of people. It's a great, great, great app to have. Um, yeah, buy this one. This is specifically apparently meant for students to get into using iPads. They wanted uh, to create a more affordable version for students that wasn't the uh, iPad Pro. The, this has the same, processors, the original iPad Pro, I believe. So it, it works really, really fast. There's no lag with this pencil. I thought I was really not going to like it because I would draw something and then I, it would delay, but it doesn't. It literally draws with you. So I'm, I could not be more impressed with it. Um, but I've also only had this for less than a week. <laughs> you guys really wanted the tutorials and the first impressions to come quickly. So I'm just gonna give you that first impressions. I've been loving it. It saved me a ton of time already. Procreate app is where it's at. And uh, maybe in the future, I'll show you how to do some things once I'm confident I even know what I'm doing because it's just been a lot of trial and error. There's already a ton of great videos on YouTube already. To be honest, that's where I learned everything I learned in that night that I learned it. <laughs> I just, just binge watching YouTube videos. So uh, if I were you and you were looking for a tablet, the new iPad, not the iPad Pro, it's just the iPad 6th generation and an Apple Pencil is uh, maybe for you. That was rather expensive and it wasn't really a part of the haul, but just to get the uh, first impressions out of the way. Here's some stuff I picked up at Daiso the other day. We have a Daiso just down the road and I love it because it's Japanese. <laughs> um, I have noticed over the years though, Daiso have taken away a lot of their uh, random products and replaced it all with Daiso branded products. Um, this is so random. This is whiteboard tape. So to give you, to mark out straight lines on a whiteboard, um, it's essentially a really, really thin black masking tape. Let me see if I can get it to work here. I have, um, I've been playing with this stuff and it's really confusing to me, but um, basically, like how random is that? I don't know how to get it to cut off yet. <laughs> I think it's like that. 
but I would probably, because it's like a masking tape, I would probably just peel up the end and snip it off. But it, how fun is that just to play with in your journal? And everything at Daiso is like $1.50, so I just thought this was really, really interesting. I could try and make a line next to it. See, I don't, there's gotta be a better way for me to get that off. But that's where the serrated edge is, so I'm, that's why I feel like it is there. It's supposed to be there. And then it gets caught in there. Okay, maybe the this design isn't the best, but I actually really enjoy the product. I think it's fun. So if I want to put this right next to it and follow that line, oh, the pressure's on. Okay, it's not perfect. <laughs> oh, just maybe go down. Just, are we learning? Are we learning things on camera? Look, I'm gonna need to find a better way to do it because does it have another thing? No. All right, leave that for another day. Uh, maybe I'll just keep doing it and I'll just snip it off when I'm finished, but I'm just really into that because I think it's really bizarre. And the same kind of concept that I also found at Daiso, these are post-it note rolls, which, so they're kind of, they're sticky all along the back and I can just peel them off as I need them. First of all, I love the color palette, even though I hate fluoro. I feel like I've started to not hate fluorescent things. I said for so many years I hated fluorescent things, but I think I might be coming around. Um, for me, this just, just, I mean, that's just too much fun. Like, how could you not enjoy that? Post-it notes on a roll, they're thin. So for me, I more felt like it was good for labeling. Like if I just had something in my book that I needed to write, I could just, I don't know, label something. I figured that like, if I really needed to make a tab, it was quick enough just to pull off and uh, fold over on itself. And then I would have a little tab I could do page markers for something, or I, I really don't know. But this was at Daiso, and this was $1.50. A part of me thought I should just buy a ton of them and stock them in the shop. Uh, but they look pretty bulky and hard to send, so I think I'm just going to let you go and figure this out for yourself. Or maybe I'll go and try and buy a few and, and just stock a few and deal with that drama. Who knows? Don't know what I'm going to do, so I won't promise anything. Also at Daiso, literally just hating on fluoro, but look what I got. These are brush calligraphy highlighters and look how bright they are mate you know what i can't say i hate highlighters anymore i guess i just hated the original highlighter products or maybe there was just a time in my life where i hated them to be honest the blue isn't really fluorescent but is there such thing as a fluorescent blue um and the pink that's a highlighter these are such a novelty i don't even know if i would need to be using these like am i ever going to draw Oh, maybe I could do lashes with them. You know I love lashes. I love using brush pen for lashes because it's, it's thin and then tapers in thicker. Thicker? Guys, I'm losing my accent. Which I think you've probably been hearing, but maybe not been saying anything. I've been in the States for a while now. It's hard to keep up. Every time I call home, I kind of get it back a little bit, but then I lose it again. <laughs> it's because I really, cause I'm always talking to Steve. He doesn't have this accent. Um, this is what I also got as well. This is Ali Brown's washi tape. Um, I actually purchased this with my own money, even though Ali was super sweet and said she would send me some. I wanted to support the launch because I am just obsessed. This is honestly, and I was telling Ali, I really, really wanted to make a rainbow washi tape, but I just couldn't settle on something I liked. And then she came up with exactly what I wanted. And I was like, great, don't have to make it anymore. <laughs> I can just buy it from you. Um, I, I was such a big supporter of Ali doing her own washi tape because I think she has so many beautiful things that are just so beautifully her. And this rainbow washi tape, it's something about this area right here, this green and this muted yellow that just reminds me of her Instagram aesthetic. And not only that, but I mean, it's got so much gorgeous like water staining in it. And it's, it's the alley rainbow plopping, the watercolor plopping. It's just to die for. I'm obsessed. Um, I've been using it sparingly, even though there's 10 meters on the roll, which is incredibly uh, generous amount of washi tape. Um, I've been using it sparingly because I don't want to run out. Like, I will probably peel that off and use it again. <laughs> I've had this, if you don't believe me, I've had this bit that I um, accidentally took too much of and tried to re-roll up. I've had it sitting on my desk, like hung off the side of my desk for about three days now. <laughs> the cats have just been pouring at it. Um, so I really, really love that one. I have the owl one too, but it's gone. I think Oliver's taken it on a holiday somewhere. <laughs> um, sorry, Ali, but I do have the owl one, which is really, really cute. Totally Ali, the sketchy owls. Um, but by far, my favorite washi tape that I've purchased in a long, long time is uh, this rainbow washi tape. So I'm really happy to have that. 
I went to a random store the other day and picked up this eraser. I have one of these that's the uh, square. I think it's Tombow. Yeah, this is the Tombow Mono Zero. Um, I do like this one. I just feel like it starts out really great because it's got these hard edges, but then it kind of doesn't have the hard edges anymore. So I thought maybe this one was smaller. But looking at it, I feel like I'm going to have the same problem. And I had to buy this because there was a $5 minimum for, to use my debit card. So <laughs> that's why I got these. <laughs> so I'm just going to be using this even if I don't like it or not. Um, but yeah, so random little eraser because I've been sketching a lot with uh, mechanical pencil. I got this, Recollections Opaque Sparkle. Oh. I actually have the copper, which is what I covered my sketch planner with, but I really wanted a sparkle one. This is metallic, but this is opaque sparkle. I really want to use it. Let me try and figure that out right now. I'm getting it everywhere. Oh, some of the actual like little glitter sparkle chunks come off. How is that supposed to stay on? I don't know how I'm supposed to get the actual, the actual, like, circle glitter parts on. Maybe I can, like, drop it on and see if it sticks. Oh, no, I just blew it away. <laughs> this stuff, as, as beautiful as it is to play with, I mean, it's just so messy. Who does um, a lot of embossing out there? Do you guys really find it is helpful to have that anti-static powder? Oh, I've managed to put a few of those on there. Let me see if I can... Just slot this on. I mean, this is so unnecessary, like an amount of work just to get one of these glitters on there. Let's melt it. Okay. Well, it is sparkly. I'll give it that. And if you can get the glitter on there, it does stick, but that's gonna be a nightmare to try and get it on there. Mm. I can't say I love it, also don't hate it. It's also not really the color. I didn't think it was that blue. I would have preferred it to be like silver. I don't know if I will use that. That's a shame. Maybe around Christmas time to do some snow, but that's just so obvious. Florals for spring, groundbreaking. All right, let's get over that. What else did I pick up at Michael's? I got some Liquitex Basics. I got the black and the white. Mars black, titanium white, because I feel like these are things you always run out of quickly. I have never used Liquitex Basics before, so I hope it's nice. And I went to Target the other day and got these, which I've seen a lot of. It's the Handmade Modern, which I feel like is just a different label for Kid Made Modern. <laughs> it's like the adult version of it. Um, but these I, I kept seeing around Easter and I thought I really wanted to give them a go. Um, they all say Satin. And these are the colors that I picked because I thought it was a really interesting color story. Look, this is Robin's egg. Robin's egg blue. So this, apparently this is the same color. Don't think so, but Tiffany blue if you're looking for it. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited for these. Elephant, I really like the idea of, um, of a, a gray. This is just a really beautiful gray to me. It's, it really does give me elephant. Um, we've got cherry blossom, Japanese, love that. Lilac. Creamsicle, which is an ice cream here in America, and Azalea, Oxford Blue, which is like a nice, it's kind of like a dirty navy, it's interesting. I've got Egg <laughs> and Robin's Egg, so two different eggs here. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna swatch these out just to see, because I, I don't even know if they're matte. They say satin, so I feel like they're not going to be matte and they might be problematic for me, but um, maybe I could just paint with them. The only reason I need matte it's because I like to do a lot of mixed media work and nothing likes to sit on top of anything if it's not matte. But I might be able to get away with it, who knows. Oh, it's so pretty. Do you know what? I'm not gonna paint it because I don't wanna have to like clean my brushes. <laughs> it's so lazy of me. I'm just gonna swipe it across here. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna like use the lid, waste not, want not, and just swipe it across and try not to get it on the table. Whoop, whoops. That lid stuck in there. <laughs> I can't get it out. I'm gonna leave that one because it's gonna become way too messy. So I'm just gonna wait because I'll do that one with my finger. Okay. Come on, baby pink. Oh, that really is like a nice neon pink. I don't know what the coverage would be like on this. Like I don't think it's um, super opaque, but it is a nice color. Oh, I'm making a mess. <laughs> I'm getting it everywhere. Why is no one surprised? Why are you all just looking at me thinking, well, obviously. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm trying to do the absolute least by doing the absolute most. Yes. 
Come on, light coral. What is this actually called? Creamsicle. I can see that. This is Heg. <laughs> it's just like a warm white. I actually really like that. And that's kind of nice and opaque. I mean, I'm being an idiot and swiping it on with the lid, so it's probably more paint than I would use, but I do enjoy that. Oxford blue, now this will be, um, this will be interesting. Cause it does look like a, a dirty navy. <laughs> okay. I'm not mad at it. Looks pretty, um, pretty opaque as well. Pretty full coverage for my makeup queens. <laughs> this is, um, this is CC cream. <laughs> this is full coverage. <laughs> mm, this is pretty. These are $1.99 at Target. So I think for $2, it's a pretty decent amount of paint with like a, they have a big color selection there. I'm gonna do this with my fingers because it's too thick. Look at it blends. Mm -hmm. That's actually really nice. <laughs> Should I make a page out of this? Just turn this into a journal with me. I do kind of want to thin it out a little bit just because I actually feel like this is starting to go a bit matte. I wonder if they say satin, they don't mean satin. <laughs> satin to me, I would have expected a little bit of a sheen, but maybe there will be, I don't know. It's starting to look like the lilac's going very matte. Let me put the colors back in here, just in case you need to grab a little screen cap for yourself when you go to Tajay. You know what? I don't think they're really a satin. I hope you've got your screenshot if you needed it, but I, um, I actually think they're matte. I'm gonna grab a pen. Let's see if we can go over This is a um, mini sew pen, the really, really cheap ones that I used to rave about. I've done a mini sew haul, I think. Yeah, you know what? There is no problem with this going on top. Let's try a uni pin. This one's almost dead. I should chuck that out, it's dead. Let's try the multi-ball. I know the multi-ball writes over a lot of stuff, but this is a ballpoint pen, so it should give you an indication. Let's try the zebra sign pen. Yeah, I mean, this writes over a lot of stuff as well, so it's never usually an issue. Let's go for a bit of pencil. Mm, pencil, you can sort of feel the plastic nature of the acrylic paint, which is, is kind of normal. Let's see if a colored pencil will work. Yeah, look, I think you're gonna have the problem you have with most um, acrylics. If you, it's very plasticky. Acrylic is essentially like a, um, there's like polymer, right? So it becomes plastic when it's dry. It's like a form of plastic with paint, like pigment in it, sorry. Um, so when you're building it up and it gets quite thick, it's like kind of drawing on plastic. If you can put it down quite sheer or um, make sure that the layers are really, really dry and really, really flat, um, then maybe there'll be something for the pencil to grab onto because essentially the pencil needs a bit of tooth to, uh, to grip to something. So it's gonna look very different uh, depending on what surface you put it on. But um, Faber-Castell poly Polychromos are pretty good for laying down on anything because they're oil-based and the wax-based pencils seem to slide off paint a little easier, um, like the actual pencil itself. But I feel like it's really not going to be a problem. Like these don't give me any more issues than I would find on say a Dilutions paint or a Distress paint. I think it's just gonna come down to personal preference. If you uh, like these colors, if the finish is something that you like, if the opacity is something that you like, but I would recommend going and trying a few if you're, uh, if you're on the fence about it. You've got your, even your Uniball Signo White works well over the, uh, the darker colors. Obviously it works well over, like if, if it works well over the dark, it must work well over the white, the light. This one's empty too. Look at me showing you all things that don't work today. Luckily, I have a spare. Yeah, this is great. I might have to go back to Target and get a few more of these. I need to go slower. I always try to push the limits with these white pens and draw really quickly and they get really upset when they don't work. Yeah, look, you can do your mixed media on it. You're really not gonna have a problem. I, um, okay, so I'm gonna recommend these to you for anyone looking for a very affordable paint. Do the math though, because maybe two ounces, two fluid ounces for $2 is maybe not cheap, but I feel like at a dollar a fluid ounce, maybe it, you wouldn't need anything more than this. 
It says here, use on wood, glass, ceramic, metal, canvas, paper, and more. Indoor, outdoor, water-based, non-toxic, dry one hour between coats for glass, ceramic, first clean with alcohol. So I would say for all uh, intents and purposes, doing mixed media, mitz, <laughs> mixed media arts and crafts, this is going to be really, really fantastic for you. So let me put them on here again. If you're curious about the color palette that I have selected, I'm just gonna go all out and say this is my perfect color palette because it is. <laughs> I've just decided it is today, and uh, yeah. I've got one more thing to show you, which is really not interesting at all. I got a tracing paper pad just to prepare some stuff. I'm really, really happy with these. I'm really, really happy with these. I'm really, really happy with this. I'm really, really happy with the iPad. Like, I'm happy with everything. There is um, nothing so far in this video that I feel like I've shown you that I don't really enjoy at the moment, except for this color. I really don't think I like that. Um, and I don't know if these work really. Okay, hope you enjoyed the haul video. If you did, uh, please leave a thumbs up and comment down below on something that you might like to see me try next or you might like to invest in yourself or something that you have that you think you haven't seen me use before and maybe uh, I would really, really fall in love with. You guys are pretty spot on with your recommendations. I'll say that much. I haven't found much uh, that you've told me to try that I haven't enjoyed. So, uh, with all that being said, I'm gonna leave you and uh, continue the rest of my personal day. <laughs> I sense a trip to McDonald's coming on accidentally. Please don't tell anyone. <laughs> Alrighty, bye everyone.